All right, in today's video, we're going to be focusing on the product and quotient rule. And this is going to open up a whole new level of functions that we can find derivatives of and therefore tangent lines of. The idea is that we're going to be taking the derivative of two functions being multiplied together. Now, in the past, when we had two functions added together, we could just take the derivative of each separately. But in the case of multiplication, we have this rule here, which is the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. And in some cases, a function could, we could actually just go ahead and multiply it out. Um, if we were to multiply this out uh, using FOIL techniques, we'd get 2x squared minus 8x minus 1x, so minus 9x plus 4. And this function we can take the derivative of using the power rule. However, as our functions become more complicated, uh, foiling them out just really doesn't seem worth it because we now have this tool available to us. And what we're going to do is we're going to call each function in the multiplication a temporary placeholder of f and g. So in this case, f is 2x minus 1, and therefore f prime is 2, and g is x minus 4, and therefore g prime is 1. That's the power rule. So when I write the derivative using this rule, f prime g plus g prime f, we're going to find that <clears throat> the derivative is 2 times x minus 4 plus 1 times 2x minus 1. So there's our derivative. Now if we were to clean this all up, we would find that it should equal 4x minus 9. We've got a 2x minus 8 plus 2x minus 1. So our 2x's become 4x and our minus 8 minus 1 becomes minus 9. And this does in fact match with the derivative of that expression. So. I know on this case, it seemed almost overkill to go through the process of doing the product rule, but it's going to be mandatory when we have functions that we cannot multiply together into a polynomial. So let's see this again in action here. We have two, two functions being multiplied together, so we'll temporarily call the first one f and the second one g. So the derivative of the first is 2x plus 3, and the derivative of the second is 4x. And what we need to do is we need to multiply f prime g, 2x plus 3 times 2x squared minus 5, plus g times f, 4x times x squared plus 3x minus 1. And this is our derivative, which I'll write as dy dx. The derivative of y with respect to x. Uh, when we jump into calculus class, we'll start taking differentiation with respect to other variables other than just x. Um, there we go. There's the product rule. The quotient rule is similar in the sense that we have two functions being divided by one another. We're going to temporarily call one of them f and one of them g. And then we're going to write out the uh, quotient rule as the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. Okay? So some people like to think of this as low d high minus high d low over the square of what's below, or low d high minus high d low over low low. This means the lower function, the derivative of the higher function, subtract 
the higher function the derivative of the lower function over the bottom of the square, or the bottom squared. I'm not a big fan of this mnemonic, but I know that some people enjoy mnemonics, so I throw that in there. Okay, and I'm just going to, off to the side, write my shorthand way of looking at the quotient rule, f prime g minus g prime f over g squared. So in this fraction, f is 3x plus 7, and g is x squared minus 1. So if I were to take the derivative of the top, that's 3, and the derivative of the bottom is 2x. And so now I can do the quotient rule f prime g minus g prime f all over the square of what's below. Okay. This is our derivative of the function. When we get into a calculus class, I'll actually start going through the process of trying to hold you accountable to simplifying these expressions. Um, but for now, in these last few hours that we have left of the school year, it's not in entirely important. Um, this is 3x squared, subtract 6x squared, subtract 3, or add 3, I guess. Nope, subtract 3. And subtract 14x. Pretty sure that's uh, the numerator. Yep, okay. So there we go. Let's take a look at another differentiation of a quotient. The top is our, our placeholder f function, and the bottom is our placeholder g function. You doing the power rule to the top, we get 6x squared plus 8x. And doing the power rule to the bottom, we get 1. So then we do the f prime g, subtract g prime f. f prime g, subtract g prime f. all over the square of what's below. And this gives us our derivative for that function. There's a really great visual uh, proof of why the product rule is the product rule. I don't know if I've got a visual proof for the quotient rule. Maybe I'll dig, try to dig one up over the summer. Um, but I can, I can walk you through the proof as to why the expression f prime g minus g prime f over g squared is the derivative. And it has to do with an application between the product rule and the power rule. So, All right, let's apply this to uh, what we just did in the, the previous notes section, which is to write the equation of a tangent line. Right now I've got the center of my tangent line occurs at negative five. I've got my f of center. That would be saying what is f of negative five. And since they told me the value, I don't even need to calculate it. Though we could, if we wanted to, stick negative five into this and we get negative five over negative one equals positive five. We just need to evaluate the derivative at the center i.e. what is the derivative or the slope of the function at negative 5. And in order to do that, we're going to need to, need to find the derivative of a quotient. So my placeholder top function is x. My placeholder bottom function is x plus 4. 
the derivative of the top is 1, the derivative of the bottom is also 1, and then we'll set up the quotient rule. So f prime times g subtract g prime times f all over g squared. This is our derivative. Now since we're doing more things with the derivative, i.e. evaluating it, I think it'd be good to simplify this. So the ones multiply in quite nicely. The numerator we have x plus 4 minus x, so our numerator is just 4. So there's our simplified derivative. If I evaluate the derivative at negative 5, negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1, and 4 over positive 1 is 4. So we have our slope for our tangent line. We can write our tangent line approximator. The function is approximated by the tangent line. I'll go ahead and write the general rule down here first. Okay. So when we start to populate these fields, f of c is the y-coordinate, or 5. f prime of c is the slope, or 4. And x minus c is, where are we centering it? We're centering it at negative 5, so x minus negative 5 becomes x plus 5. So if we were to grab a calculator and take a look at what this function looks like or do some exploration using knowledge that we have, we would find something to the effect of a curve that looks something like this. And that's what that that function f of x should look like. And actually, I did that from my brain. I, I think I want to confirm this with the calculator. x divided by x plus 4. Zoom 6. Oh, good thing I checked. I have it upside down. So then the tangent line out here at negative 5 comma 5 that is this equation so okay now something that should be noted when we're learning about the quotient rule is students sometimes tend to uh, over apply the quotient rule they see a fraction bar and they immediately think that a quotient needs to happen. But that's not always the case. For example, if your term in the denominator is just a singular term, there's no need to do the quotient rule. You can, it'll just be more time consuming. In this case, if I wrote this as 1 8th x squared minus 4 8 x, I no longer have a quotient, I just have constants in front, and so differentiating is just a matter of using the power rule, which could then be simplified. Okay, So don't be uh, scared when you see a fraction and think that you have to use the quotient rule, because it's not always the case. If it's just a singular piece in the denominator, then you should be fine with rewriting it. So 3 fifths x cubed, 
not a fraction. Very easy to apply the product rule, sorry, the power rule to. So y prime equals 9 fifths x squared. And in this case, there is no need to simplify it. It is already simplified. Um, I suppose some students would want to write it like 9x squared over 5. That's fine too. Um, either one of these is good. I, I favor this one. but This one here, we have a single term in the denominator. And single terms in the denominator mean that you don't have to do the quotient rule. So if I were to simplify this expression, I have five halves of an x on top and one whole x on bottom. So we could reduce that to five halves minus one is three halves of an x on top. Okay, and that's, that's using the properties of exponents to reduce this fraction. 2.5 minus one is 1.5. Okay. Now then when we take the derivative of this, we use the power rule, six times three halves is 18 halves and then subtract one from the exponent. This can be simplified further to be nine x to the one half, or some people might write that as nine root x. Okay. Same thing here, our denominator of, I'm gonna write this as x to the one half. That's just a singular term denominator, so we don't have to do the quotient rule on it. We can simplify this x to the fourth over x to the half is x to the three and a half, or I'll write seven halves. x to the third over x to the half is x to the two and a half. And x over x to the half is x to the one half. So we just subtracted one half from each of these exponents to come up with this. And now we don't have to do the quotient rule, and we can just apply the power rule. 42 halves x to the 5 halves, plus 5 halves x to the 3 halves, minus 1x to the negative 1 half. Running out of space in that box. 21x to the 5 halves plus 5 halves x to the 3 halves minus 1 over, I'm going to write it like that. Okay. Um, all right, there's that. All right, in this final uh, portion of the video, we're going to talk about higher order derivatives. And they're actually very easy to calculate. If you know how to take a derivative, a second derivative would just be the derivative of the derivative. The cool thing about this is that it introduces us to one of the very first uh, application concepts that we're gonna be talking about rather deeply through the course, and that's the relationship between position, velocity, and acceleration. If we define velocity as the rate of change of position, which that's what it is, then we find that the derivative of position would be the rate of change of position and thus velocity. Acceleration is defined as the rate of change of velocity. So if we take the derivative of velocity, we get acceleration. So this relationship that the derivative of position is velocity and the derivative of velocity is acceleration is a key component of calculus class. Um, sometimes I write this horizontally S prime prime of t equals V prime of t equals A of t. So if we're going to be getting to the position where we're going to take a second derivative, then we need to be able to see this in action. So here's the various notations for this, y prime versus y prime prime. Um, there's even third derivatives and fourth derivatives, etc. though we don't really dive too deeply past the second derivative very often. So let's find the first derivative to allow us to find the second derivative. So in this case, we have a polynomial, so we can just apply the power rule to each piece, and we get 9 halves x squared plus 10x minus 6. So there's our first derivative, and if I were to take the derivative of that, I would get the second derivative, which is 9x plus 10. So if this function represented the position of a particle, 
um, at time x, then plugging in x equals 1 would tell you where the particle is at time 1. Plugging x equals 1 into this equation would tell you what is the velocity of the particle at time 1, and plugging 1 into the, this equation would give us what is the acceleration of the particle at time 1. Okay? So taking a second derivative is as easy as that, just take the derivative of the first. Here we have a quotient, and first instinct would say jump to the quotient rule, but realize instead, because we just saw if a singular term exists in the denominator, these can usually be cleaned up. x squared over x is x, 4x over x is 4, and 5 over x is 5x to the negative 1. So there's our function that we're going to take the first derivative and second derivative of. The first derivative is 1 plus 5x to the negative 2, or you could write that as 1 plus 5 over x squared. The second derivative is going to be the derivative of 1 is 0, so that goes away, and this becomes negative 10x to the negative 3, or you could write that as 10 over x cubed. Seven C requires the use of the quotient rule because our denominator is actually more than one term. So if we call these F on top and G on bottom, F prime G minus G prime F over G squared we get this as the first derivative. If I were to clean this up, the x subtract x cancels out and we're left with 2 over x plus 2 squared. Or 2 over x squared plus 4x plus 4. Depending on how, where you want to go with the simplifying process. Now again, we have the first derivative, but our goal was to find the second derivative of each function. So y prime prime, the derivative of the top is 0 times the bottom, minus the derivative of the bottom times the top, all over the bottom squared. And I'm going to write it like this. The bottom squared would be x plus 2 to the fourth. If we are to clean this expression up, 0 cancels that, so that goes away, and the 2 distributes, and we get negative 4x minus 8 over x plus 2 to the fourth. There's our second derivative. Rewriting these as uh, fractional exponents makes a, it easier to apply the power rule in part d. The first derivative is 4 times a half. Subtract 6 times a negative a half. And then we decrement the exponents by 1. There's our first derivative. The second derivative would be, again, applying the power rule here, 2 times the negative half is negative 1. Subtract 1 from the exponent. And then 3 times 3 halves is negative 9 halves, x to the negative 5 halves. All right. There's our second derivatives and a review or a teaching of the product and quotient rule. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.